Hello and welcome to another Whiskey Review. With me, the Whiskey Novice. Thank you for joining me for review number 213. Now, believe it or not, when I'm actually uh, deciding what to review, I do sometimes make notes. I do sometimes, believe it or not. And uh, in this case, in this case, I had in my notes Waterford something. It was quite simply that, Waterford something. I have reviewed one Waterford in the past. I'll throw a link in for it up here. Uh, it was one of the micro cuvées. But I wanted to review something more from their core range. Uh, if you could call it that, there's an awful lot of stuff out there. So I settled on this one, the Ballycal Cavan 1.1. I've, I've maybe said there I've got a few, so I just grabbed this one and decided to settle on it. I'll, I'll get more into Waterford and what they do uh, after, after, I've reviewed, after I've reviewed this. So let's just get in and give this my view, shall I? Bald at 50%, non chill filtered, no color added. Sweet toffee is the first thing I get. It smells very young because it is very young. And I'll get into that in a moment as well. Actually, let's just give it a chance to settle a while. This was distilled, and I'll, I'll also harken back to how I know this in a while. This was distilled in 2016, bottled in uh, 2020. It was exactly three years, 11 months and 18 days. So four years all by the shouting, a four year old whiskey. So as I said, when it smells young, it is young. There were 8,640 bottles of it. <clears throat> this one in particular. And it was one of their original early releases. If you've ever smelt Pochine, if you're not aware what Pochine is, Pochine was sort of that illegal spirit that was produced in mostly in Ireland, you would have heard the term Pochine. However, everybody had their, probably every country had their version of it. I mean, the United States is your white, white lightning or whatever you want to call it, hooch. You know, so it was basically a legally illicit made spirit. And it was the stuff that it was made roughly and not terribly well made. Technically, you're looking at new make spirit. However, whenever you were looking at potching, the old potching, there would have been no cuts or anything made. You know, you would have basically just been bottling up everything, poisonous or not. Um, however, nowadays, potching is back with a legal standing, totally different, uh, very differently made. It was rules and regulations around it. So it has to be rested for a period of time, etc., etc. And And it's, it's becoming a very popular thing. Not whiskey, obviously, because it hasn't been matured. Uh, but this has got that youthful, estery, potching smell. It's all caramel-like new make spirit. And I like my new make spirit to be fruity if I can. And this one here tends to be that little bit more rich and sweet, uh, more toffee, more caramel. Waterford generally, generally as a rule of thumb, use X bourbon, X premium wine or X premium French casks or French red wine casks, and Vin du Naturel. And Vin du Naturel, Naturel is uh, it's a, a sweet sort of dessert French wine. And these guys use use the, those casks in their maturation. But they haven't done an awful lot in this case, in my opinion, probably because they didn't really get the opportunity to do an awful lot because it's only been there four years and I'll get later to the, the, the setup of the maturation in this. Give it a while, there are hint, hints of overripe banana. Maybe some blood orange. But mostly that sweet caramel to me, even little hints of coffee in the background. Let's get into the palette. It 
It's lovely. Soft, actually. Sweet and sour delivery. Instantly. Instantly. This is better in the palate than the nose would suggest. The caramel notes are still there, but they're outplayed by red fruit strawberry. Uh, strawberry, cranberry maybe, yeah. That blood orange is back, yes, definitely. There's also a dry cereal note in there, which is very nice. Very nice. This is a lovely palette. The youthfulness isn't there. And it's weirdly very delicate for 50%. This is very drinkable in my opinion. Very drinkable. finish sort of medium to long with uh, memories of that dry cereal and yet again some of that red fruit not not hot once again for 50% and plays out with a nice white peppery finish nice wet white pepper right at the very end now while I let the water settle on that I'm gonna I'm gonna go into some facts some details I've I've just I have them on my phone here in case you're wondering what I'm doing. Uh, Waterford, Waterford, this this whole terroir thing about where the grain came from, where the barley came from, makes the difference, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'll buy into that. All right, I'll I'll, I'll buy into it here for a moment. Uh, I know that it's a very wine terminal. It's a great wine terminology, and that you know it's carried through that where the grape was grown, where the vines were grown, can change the flavour of the grape. Understandable. Does it work in barley? Will we ever know? <laughs> because yes, this came from Ballykilcavan Farm. This is another one. I just dragged this one out. Bally Morgan. This came from a farm Bally Morgan. It's another one point one. So we have Bally Kilcavan, Bally Morgan. Grains, barley from different farms. There is a terroir code on the back of each bottle. If you go into that, now this is something, damn you Waterford, damn you, because we line up to, to people lined up to berate Waterford at the start. And I, I, I admit, I've said this before, I'd admit I was maybe one of those in that queue. I went to the distillery, over a year ago, loved it. Uh, lovely people, lovely place, very uh, modern, nice, loved it. Uh, then I started to review this. Don't get me wrong, I still, you know, I can definitely get with what Waterford are doing. However, you know, the terroir thing, yeah, yeah. But then you go into this breakdown, and and what are we always asking for? More traceability, more transparency. Well. You don't get much more transparent than Waterford. They, I mean, you put in that terroir code in the back of a ball and it will tell you everything, everything. What was the farmer's dog's name? What would his wife have for breakfast that morning? That sort of stuff. Not actually, but you know, almost. Uh, so different grains, right? Can I taste the difference? Yes, I know I've tasted this one, the Bally Morgan beside the Valley Kilcavan. And these are just two examples of many. And these are just 1.1s. It's not as if they were a step on. Yes, you can taste the difference. You can. Is it the barley I'm tasting the difference in? How do I know? Because let me tell you something. This one, the Valley Kilcavan, here's your, here's your maturation makeup, okay? 45% first fill US bourbon casks. 37% uh, well, they said the French wine, they're talking about premium French casks. So they say French, this is the premium French cask, 37%, 18% Fin de Naturel. All right. This one, the Bally Morgan. They lock that in. The Bally Morgan, 37% first fill US, 
18% virgin US, 27% premium French, and 13% Ben de Naturel. So they have completely, completely different maturations. Not, not completely, but I mean, glaringly different maturations. So that sort of, in my opinion, maybe I'm wrong, makes the whole terroir thing a little redundant because if you've changed your maturation what does it matter how would you ever know what the difference is between the grains and this has been my sort of beef all along let's get back into this and i'll tell you what it's like with a drop of water in it before i um wrap up on waterford now weirdly with the addition of water it tends to go the other way then a lot of the red fruit starts to show up on the palate or in the nose sorry the red the red fruit uh, then comes into the nose still little hints of coffee it's weird i never i never noticed the coffee before it's a, uh, ground up coffee beans yeah the, this those sweeter red notes red fruit notes are on the nose now rather than that really toffee thing And I'm convinced that the palate goes the other way. So it tends to become more about, the, about that caramely thing, that youthful caramely. It does, definitely. It's like a, almost, and I was saying about coffee, it's actually coffee cake, hints of walnut. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, finish remains decent. It remains, look, it's a good whiskey, in my opinion. It's a decent whiskey. It wasn't worth the £75 that it went onto the market at. No. Uh, I bought, I'm buying up sort of Waterfords on the secondary market, and they're going for one hell of a lot cheaper than what they were originally going for. So that's what I'm buying them at. Just, uh, I quite enjoy the difference between them. And I do enjoy them as a whiskey. I do think that the bottle's a beautiful looking thing. It's just a personal thing. Once again, bottles don't matter to me, but when the whiskey's decent and the bottle's nice, bottle's a bonus. I think the way to sum up Waterford is keep an eye on them. Watch Waterford. I think in 10 years time when Waterford are, when Irish whiskey has settled itself out a bit, Waterford should, I hope, will be one of those sitting atop a heap of many, many Irish whiskies. Certainly not maybe on the top, but certainly up there with the top five. Because let's face it, Mark Rainier knows what he's doing. He left. Brook Laddie, he knew, he learnt a lot of Brook Laddie, he already knew what he was doing and he came over to Waterford, started this distillery and they, the guys do know what they're doing, they're just very young uh, I do think they release far, far too much stuff uh, slow down a bit stop, as a matter of fact, just stop Waterford, stop for now, calm down, resettle and then maybe a, an age state it, even whenever you get seven, even maybe a seven year old, don't charge too much for it I think you could win a market very, very easily, in my opinion. There, I think I've said enough of water for, for now. I'll leave it and we'll move on. Yeah, this is young. It's young tasting. It is young. It is actually young. But I think definitely, given a few years, Given time to settle down, I do believe that Waterford will be one to watch. So what am I going to offer up to you as an alternative here? Well, I mentioned I mentioned the distillery uh, shortly ago there, previously. What? Words. I know the words, but I just can't do it out. Uh, and Mark Rainier moved. And he didn't leave too much. He, br he brought some with him. He definitely brought some with him. So it's time to get the magic fingers in the go again. Uh, mind you, it's a little cold up here, so there might not be too much snap. And um, we're going to look at this uh, Brook Laddie local barley, a Brook Laddie local barley. I and I, I 
openly admit I don't have a bottle of this. I'll openly admit I only actually tried this once. And I knew immediately when I tried it that it reminded me of something. And it was Waterford. And once again, it's it's you know, it's pretty much similar. Okay, the Brook Laddie will have that little bit more age about it, that little bit more experience about it. But they're they're similar within, you know, within reason. But this, the Brook Laddie, was lovely. I remember when I tasted it. I'll not dive deep into the scenario, but I could not nail where that came from. I know we still consider uh, Isla to be, be that sort of peated uh, area of Scotland. However, we know that Brook Laddie, the classic Laddie, isn't peated. We know that this isn't peated. We know that that isn't peated, etc. And this one, the local barley, isn't. And I remember when uh, asked to have a guess as to where this came from, I went round the whole of Scotland before I settled on Isla. And I remember thinking it was lovely. So uh, that would be my recommendation to you. If, if Waterford, if you liked what was going on at Waterford, but you want a bit more, look at Brook Laddie. They, they, because, the, as I said, the experience is there. So uh, they're they're fairly similar, you know, but there just seems to be that bit more going on about Laddie. So we'll just get rid of that and uh, wrap this up. That felt like as if it went on for a long, long time. But I did have a lot to say about Waterford. And I do, I do think that they will improve. Uh, they just need to, to me, calm down a little for now. Stop releasing so many expressions. Come back with a big one, a good age statement, something that we can really hang our coats on. Because I, I do like the direction they're headed, personally. Hmm. There we go. Go leave that at that. Say thank you very much for joining me. Always a pleasure. Thank you very, very much to my patrons. Should anybody wish to join that group, the details are in the video description below. I'll be back the next time with something different, probably. Uh, until then, look after yourselves. Here's to your good health. Cheers. Hey, thanks for watching my video. Please click and subscribe to be notified of further content.